it's summer 2024 and you want something special if you always watch anime that starts with freaking flawless the myth the legend female main character who is somehow the most beautiful the hair is the most unique the one that is the most skilled smart and kind the one that sits beside the classroom window and only talk to the person beside her and it is always you guess it it a guy and somehow she's interested in yes i'm talking about you shikimori i'm just kidding let's not talk about trash where we are talking about masterpiece in this episode this is the second half of this series anime rap summer 2024 10 year anniversary specials and same as shikanoko koshitangtang this is as of 8 august 2024 or episode 6 when i finalize everything i will not know anything about episode 7 onwards and this time around i am talking about aoya sometimes hide the feelings in russian or in japanese toki toki boso to russia go de there you turn your aoya san or in russian Jesus Christ, I remember butchering the pronunciation so bad on the other episodes. Never mind, Roshi Derek, this is much better. But hey, I want to say this already. This anime was drawn by Dogakobo, well known for Oshinoko, Shikimori, and Plastic Memories. Specifically compared to Shikimori, in the first 3 minutes of episode 1, I'm already confirmed that and convinced that this show is 100 times better than Shikimori. 3 minutes in only? How the fuck? Honestly, I have no idea as well. Maybe there's no bullshit like the male MC isn't an unlucky boy who traded all his luck in exchange of getting a girlfriend who every gen seems one lah. If you know, you know. You know the drill? Let's do one of our last character show kai. So we already know Aoya Kujo, the better Shikimori. And right now, the prettiest girl so far in this season in my opinion. I really have low standards, but whatever. Then we have Masachika, our male MC in this show. He used to learn Russian as he used to have an Osana Najimi. That is also a Russian. You are correct, people. I know what you guys are thinking. And she is related to Aoya, and her name is Maria Kujo. Or Masha. Masha in the bed, I guess. She is the older sister of Aoya, and maybe not really 100% confirmed. Had a crush on Masachika. Before she went back to Russia, this is Yuki Suo, the younger sister of Masachika. Even though they have different surname, I don't really know if they are blood related or not because their hair color is the same. Anyway, they just said that they are childhood friends and the characters inside did not feel suspicious when they say that. But to us readers and watchers, you cannot fool us. Then apparently, you know in the previous part, the Shikanoko episode, I say that the sister is a siscon. Then this sister, maybe is a brocon. I don't know, but judging by what she has done to him, I rest my case. I want to talk about episode 2 to 4 a bit. So basically, it's Masajika at the school student council committee drama, which we saw he doubting whether he wanted to join the council or not. Yes, of course, spoiler alert, it took him some time to be convinced and then join, but there's many processes behind, such as following his sister to go shopping, eat ramen, uh, at this point I don't know who is talking who, but anyway, is this scene necessary? Like, does it really progress the story? Well, of course not, but at least we get to see Aoya in different outfits, right? Yuki also introduced her brother to the student council resident. Let's call him Toya, not Toya from Wee Best Squad. Apparently, Toya is older than them and we know that Aoya is competing to be the next student council president for next year. I vote for her not gonna lie. Instead of never mind. Then we go back to flashbacks again. I thought it won't happen in this episode of anime rap. These flashbacks show how Aoya has become who wants to do everything solo because of the people around her. Bro, like that I think you are in the wrong universe man. You should have replaced Jin Wu instead. You guys should know who who is he lah. Okay, fine. I'm not even sure Aoya can even fight or not. Let's move on. Then we get a bit of background to see how both Masajika and Aoya got to become <coughs> friends. Sorry, this is not Shikimori. As he was the only one that observes and noticed about her overworking and doing everything by herself. Care about her by telling her that not do everything is done by one person and you are not Jingwu. Aoya asked what she can do in return for Masa and he wanted he said he wanted himself only to call her Aoya. That's why we got this name. Sorry Masa. I also call her Aoya. But too bad you're not a real life person. <laughs> and then 
invited her to join the dance in the school culture festival. And then, bro, what the hell? Why is the dancing scene not animated here? Yo, what? That is the greatest opportunity to let the ship sail, eh? Yo, this can't be happening, man. I mean, it legit didn't happen. But to those non-manga readers out there, please, go and read the fucking manga. The next episode, then, he helped to sort out the disagreement of two different sports clubs, football and baseball to be exact, to settle who, which place, to use which place for their practice or training, which two parties eventually agreed. Uh, afterwards, he agreed to join the student council. Wow, it took him a while, huh? Anyway, I think I overreacted just now when I mentioned that they didn't animate the dancing part. I think I overreacted even more when this scene happens. Yo, you all know that every time when Aoya speaks in Russian and there will be Japanese translator on screen, right? Then on this one, there isn't. But lucky to us English sub watchers, the subtitles for English is provided. But those that don't watch in English subs do not know. And I was like, damn son, you're hitting the jackpot, bro. But then they repeated the scene after the ED. So I was like, okay, fine, never mind. I take my word back. Then we was thinking about the other girls and admitted in front, right in front of Aoya. <laughs> then she slapped the fuck out of me, which I mean, you fucking deserve it, lah, Masa. And this is what happened. So... Alright guys, that's it. I can't take this anymore. See ya. Let's talk about Yuki Suo a bit. Yes, people, I agree that she may be the best girl. Um, actually, after a few episodes, I have um, think that she is legit the best girl. But let me tell you, if this is not controlled and continues progressing like this, I think soon Aoya will become like Oshinoko. Don't get me wrong, Oshinoko is good, but where are they right now is fucking abysmal. From talking about how toxic the idol industry is, to the next level of Yosuka no Sora. <laughs> Anime is not exceptional, and furthermore, I don't know what's her intention behind. She's not just openly and blatantly telling Aoya that she loves Kuzekun and asking her whether she has the same feeling as her. What? Okay, but I like this part though, which is breaking the fourth wall, but I'm not surprised. Since the previous part, the Shikadoko no Ko, they are doing it every second. But what I was surprised by is that she is like Deadpool talking to us. I don't know, maybe I watched the Deadpool movie before watching this, so... There are actually way more characters than I expected. I mean, if you read the manga, and you will know. But somehow, the characters introduced in this timing is quite late. As we actually have three more girls to say. So we already know Aoya, Yuki, and Masha. Now it's time for Chisaki, Sayaka, and Ayano. Wait, who are they? Let's talk about Chisaki first. She is the girlfriend of Toya and also the vice president of the student council. Wait, shouldn't I say that she is the vice president of the student council first, then I say she is the girlfriend of Toya? Okay, now my wife. She uses physical voice violence. Actually, no. To solve problems, therefore many guys are scared of him. She kinda of remind me of Tomo-chan from Tomo-chan is a girl. Whatever, but at least I know every each long call anime, right? There's at least one girl who is more masculine. Then for Sayaka, I don't know, right? Okay, guys, I just want to apologize that I did a little bit of cheating here because, by right, I'm supposed to talk about only until episode 6. And this part is actually added on the very last minute. So I went to dig in and found out that Ayano was a maid and she worked for both Masa and Yuki household. That's why at the end of episode 6, she called him Master. When I saw Ayano at the start, I thought she traveled from the Shikanoko world to here because she just behaved like the people over there, as in not normal. But I couldn't say much since she was taught this way. And let me tell you, it's not really surprising that she is also in love with Masa. Then for Sayaka, right? Wow, okay, relax right there, bro. You appear on the first second and you're here trying to have a beef with our alpha girl out here? This is madness! Stop right there, bro. This is a bit too much, don't you think? Why not sit back, relax, and chill to discuss things slowly? Now, I, will talk, I want to talk about the ending songs. Wow, I can't believe that Noga Kobo is pulling a meta move right here. <laughs> what does that mean? They are trying to be like Chainsaw Man. So, every episode has a different ending song. However, instead of hiring different artists to sing for them, they asked the VA of Aoya, Sumire Uesaka, to sing for all 12 endings here. 
specifically want to talk about the second ending. Then when I first heard this ending, right, I didn't expect they would take this song. Like this is the least thing or the last thing I would hear. Yes, and the last thing I would expect. Yes, people. This is the first ending song that I know how to sing before even know it. I'm just kidding. I can't sing, and I have watched Takagi San before. I'm talking about Kawakute Goben, a famous song from Honeyworks. I remember discussing this in the Spy Family episode. Hey, don't underestimate Sumire Isaka, man. She is known for Shisato from Benjun, Nagatoro, and Miko from the recent anime Jellyfish Can't Swim in the Night, and many others. The rest of the endings are also used in other anime, such as Chisana Koi no Uta, used in Ninjun Next Door Spoils Me Rotten, and Hari Hari Yukai used in Hari Suzumiya. Since they are doing covers for the rest of the series, I would actually like to predict the future ending songs that they may do. Okay, so the first one that they most likely will cover is Kimi ni Totoke by Flampu, because many Ronko anime use it such as Takagi-san and also Ninja Next Door. I mean, I actually predicted that Chisana Koi no Ota will use it, and I got it right, so... Okay, so these are the upcoming songs that I may think that they will cover, such as Kokoro Yoho by Eve and Bansanka by Tsuki. Wait guys, do you think they will buy songs from Yoshika or Enduna? If so, I think any of, song, any of the songs from them. And, oh yes, maybe from Roku Denashi also. And how about Yasobi? Most likely not, but because I don't really think any of the Yasobi songs can fit in the theme of Roshi that right? Okay, but not gonna lie, I want to hear Sumire sing Idol though. <laughs> okay, but how about Zutomayo or Ado? I would say 6 out of 10, they will get their songs because Ado has different range of song genres. While for Zutomayo, I don't know, I'm not a music expert. But overall, I feel like Roshi Dere in this episode for 7 episodes, I'm giving a 10 out of 10, definitely. If not, I won't be doing this right now. It has been a fun one while discussing one of the best anime out there for this season. Even though there has been a lot of preparations behind it, I still managed to find time to make everything possible before the deadline. That being said, thank you once again for watching this video. Hit the like and the subscribe button if you haven't. And thanks again for witnessing this journey with me together with another 10 more years ahead. My name is Zayn and I will see you in the next video. Peace. Tell your name,